On the 30th of January 2017, Reddit user the throwaway 181718 would create a post on the confession subreddit with the title, I was in a cult. This post would pique the curiosity and skepticism of Redditors. The post reads as following, Firstly, apologies for my anonymity. I don't want this to get back to me, but I haven't told anyone about this. I need to get it off my chest. Three years ago when I was in college, I was suffering with severe depression. I took medication and attended therapy and group therapy. One day in my group therapy, our therapist told us that there's a man here to talk to us. For reasons, let's call him Bob. Bob was really energetic, really friendly and understanding. He spoke to us on our level, a bunch of vulnerable teenagers. He told us about a group therapy holiday. We go away over the summer holidays and do some cool things like rafting, rock climbing, etc. He explained that this was completely free because the college would pay for us to go, and it lasts five weeks. Not many people were interested, but I decided to ask him a few questions after the session. He told me that it was all about adventure, making friends and having fun, whilst continuing our therapy. I asked for some details of him, but he didn't have a card, so he asked for mine. Stupidly, I gave him my phone number, email address, and home address. Later that night, I was telling my parents about it. They seemed a little suspicious, but I was trying to convince them. Whilst we were talking, there was a knock at the door. It was Bob. My dad welcomed him in, and he spoke to both of them, explaining that it is good for my mental health, and it's also a lot of experiences, as well as completely free. After talking for a while, my parents agreed that I could go. They filled out some paperwork, and the next time I saw Bob was when I got on the coach, with lots of other people around my age. Bob was really enthusiastic, and everyone looked excited, albeit we were all having mental health issues. Bob explained that on our first day, we would be doing an adventure course and building a raft to help with teamwork with our fellow campers. We drove north to a walled-off campsite. It was huge. As we got off the bus, everyone had to go for a physical checkup. It was uncomfortable, but I assumed it was to make sure we could take part in the events. The doctor was very thorough. When we left, we couldn't find our suitcases, so we guessed they were brought to our rooms. But when we got to our rooms, they weren't there either. I asked Bob, and he said that we weren't allowed them, and we weren't allowed phones either. He asked for all of our phones. Me and the other boys in my room refused, but then he said that it was in the contract we signed. Reluctantly, we gave up all of our possessions, and he gave us these ugly tracksuits to wear, because we didn't want our nice clothes to get dirty. We did some activities, and they were fun, but then we all went for dinner. Before anyone started eating, one of the group leaders said that we should all pray. I'm not religious, and there was no indication this was a religious group, so I was a bit confused. The group leader said we should say thanks to the gods for bringing us all together. I thought this was weird, but assumed he was just being inclusive of everyone's religions. Later that night, we all went to bed. Whilst we were in bed, another group leader, let's call him Todd, came in and forced us all to stand up. We did, and he told us all off for sleeping in our boxes. He said that we should sleep in the tracksuits. We put our tracksuits on, and as soon as he left, we took them off again. It was summer after all. The next few days were pretty much the same. There were some fun activities, but they were always shadowed by the group leaders acting weird and very strict. The boys and girls weren't allowed to talk to each other. When we went swimming, we went in our tracksuits. We were really only allowed to talk during these activities, and every meal we had to pray, and the leaders always said things like, the gods will show us the way to the end. And honestly, I was getting really creeped out. We did exciting activities, but we also had some more boring ones, like meditation. They also told us that if we wanted to stay after the five weeks, we could stay, and we could invite our families to live with us. One evening, I asked Bob if I could call home, just because I wanted to talk to my family. He said that my family was already told that I arrived safely and I'm happy. I tried to argue it, but he was determined to not let me contact my family until the five weeks were up. I didn't know where they took my suitcase, so I had no way of contacting them. That evening, there was a campfire event. It was integrated with a group therapy session. 
I asked to use the bathroom in the main building and sneaked off. There was a small office that was empty and the lights were off, so I went in and used the phone to call my home phone. I told my mum what was happening and she said that they would come and get me straight away. In the back of the office was another room filled with suitcases and a plastic box filled with phones. It took a while to find my phone, but I stuck it in my pocket and then tried to look for my suitcase. Whilst I was looking, Todd walked into the room and caught me. He practically dragged me out and sat me down in the hallway, yelling at me for disobeying the rules. He said I was trying to get my clothes and it was a sin to be proud or something. He took me back to the group and told the other group leaders in front of everyone else. The group leaders were then angry at everyone and started going over the rules. We were all sent to bed without dinner. In bed I was on my phone, texting my dad who said they were arriving now. I made sure the other boys didn't see I had my phone. Eventually my dad texted me saying something like, we're outside, come now. So I pretty much jumped out of my bed and ran out as fast as I could, past the group leaders who tried to stop me from running out of the building. Down the dirt road to my mum's car at the edge of the campsite, the leaders chasing me. My dad got out of the car and locked me in the car with my mum. The group leaders were saying that I wasn't allowed to leave, that my parents signed a contract saying I can't leave until the five weeks are up. My dad refused and they tried to open the doors to get me out. Somehow, my dad got back into the car and the doors were locked before they could get me out and my parents drove me home. At home, I told my parents everything. The next morning, Todd and some other group leaders were at my front door. My dad told them to go away as they still tried to get me to come back to the camp, but they wouldn't leave without me. My dad called the police and the police escorted them away. We couldn't see them, but we knew they were watching. I pretty much didn't leave the house for the rest of the summer, and I was constantly peering out of my window. When college started again, I left the house on my own for the first time to get to the bus, and as I walked down the road, I could hear Todd and the others calling after me. I tried to run, but there were around 10 of them. They surrounded me on the street. A few people from the houses heard the commotion, and I yelled out for them to call the police. A few men came out, and a fight started. I managed to run back to my house and lock myself in. The group leaders were arrested, but the next week a new group would show up in my area. Eventually, we moved house, I stopped going to college, and we had to start a whole new life. We don't live in witness protection, but we use fake identities to stop them from finding us. My parents were in contact with the college and the police. The college stopped funding the group and the police told us they would start an investigation and that Todd had killed himself whilst on bail. I don't know much more than that but I hope that everyone in the group is safe. In response to this post, there was a fair amount of support, but also some skeptical about the details, such as why the OP would move and change identities, how their phone was charged after not being charged for days. It wouldn't take long for others to narrow down the OP's location either, as they had stated they can't get a gun, and spelling mum with a U rather than an O eliminating the US and leading Redditors to believe the OP is somewhere in England, Australia, or New Zealand. The OP would respond, stating, I never intended for this to be a potential way of exposing the group, and I didn't expect it to have such a huge and supportive reaction. As some of you have some questions, I'd like to answer them, but I still wish to remain anonymous and not give away too much information. In response to all the questions about my phone, I didn't think it was worth mentioning that I turned it off before I handed it over. I haven't heard from any of the teenagers in the group since I left, and I haven't heard from the leaders since we moved house. There was an investigation a few years ago, and I don't know what has happened to the group. Some of you have guessed my country, but still I don't want to give away too much information about where I live. The reason I won't expose the group is because it would be interfering with the police investigation if it's still ongoing and it would bring more attention to myself. When I said we changed identity, I mean we unofficially have started using a new surname, only our closest relatives know this. We didn't take out a restraining order because it would only lead to court cases and potential threat to our family. As explained above, a group of the leaders were arrested and charged with harassment, however more people turned up soon after. I'm scared of even googling the group name, as I know that if they track me down it wouldn't end well. 
I hope you all understand the position I'm in and know that for my family and my own protection, I can't give more than that. I also wanted to say thanks for all the supportive messages. You guys really are the greatest community. Maybe one day there will be a complete resolution to this and I'll be able to tell the full story to you all. But unfortunately, we wouldn't find out the full story because only four days later on the 4th of February, the OP would leave a comment on the thread stating, this is not true. I was part of a therapy group that specializes in helping teenagers with mental health problems. It was not a cult. Since then, I have decided to rejoin the group. I will answer no further questions on this matter. After this comment, the thread would be deleted, and as of today, throwaway181718 has not posted again. To try to get more information, I tried searching for any camp counsellor or group leader who had been on bail or done something to themselves while on bail, as the OP claims, but couldn't find anything. The story itself is believable because I found the number of camps surrounded by scandals and allegations that operate globally is far too common. As for the OP going back to the group, I find it hard to believe. If the group leader had harmed himself while on bail for a crime he'd committed, and the college the OP went to did stop finding the group, it's strange they would go back or even be welcome to rejoin. You would also think that if the person truly is under 18, that the parents would do everything in their power to stop them from going back. But on the other hand, if this person did have some mental health issues, the story could have been exaggerated or made up entirely. Unfortunately, we will never know what happened to throwaway181718.